Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with GTA Online. If you enjoyed this video, please rewrite Darwin's theory of evolution so that all organisms originate from pelicans, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Meet Thick Man, a retired assassin who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are the boys, 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 and together they form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. Bruh. I spawn into Los Santos and today we're getting back to our roots. Back to what made us who we are. A time with the bros, tasteful peeny jokes, and we're also going to be doing a whole lot of meme tactics. Things like war trains. Wow, so cool. And this is more exciting than the ads on adult websites. They always tell me that there are horny singles in my area, but never what direction they're in. And first though, my sponsored ad segment, because I get sponsorships now, proving anything is possible. Hi, my name's Jeff, and I'm here to tell you about my special YouTuber morning routine. I start off the day by waking up at 3.30, 30am and listening to an ebook with my Raycon earbuds. Right now I'm listening to Modest Pelican and Stealth Omato erotica fanfiction. I then go for an 11 mile jog while listening to Christian rock bangers via my impressive 6 hour long battery life Raycon earbuds. I then visit my girlfriend as commitment and trust helps keep me grounded and focused. Of course the entire time I'm listening to cryptocurrency updates via my stylish Bluetooth wireless Raycon earbuds. I then go and visit my other girlfriend because diversity and change helps keep me on my toes and ensures I'm ready for anything the day throws at me. At this point, I'm usually listening to some post-bop smooth fusion jazz on my Raycon earbuds that come in a wide range of colors and patterns. I then go for a second 16 mile jog and arrive home to consume my rich nourishing breakfast. A glass of lemon water mixed with the tears of biracial athletes and of course Pitbull's hit 2009 album Rebulation via my Raycon earbuds that have a 45 day free return policy. They're high quality, affordable, co-founded by Ray J himself and even renowned philosopher Snoop Dogg wears them. You know why I like Jeff? He wears Raycon earbuds. And click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash modest pelican to get 20% off your next Raycon purchase. I recommend that you do that every morning, but now it's time to open up our minds. The first thing I do is customize my beetle, and I honestly think it looks worse than before. I go and pick up my boy Stealtho Robbo, who proceeds to rudely ram my beetle with his four-wheel drive. As you know, he likes to play as a thick female strawberry character, which I feel really got this community through the loneliness of quarantine. He's also incredibly proud of his four-wheel drive, so I decide to hit him with a wholesome Christian prank. Talk me through it. So what's like, what's it based off and shit? So it's based off... In my life. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> if you're new here, I commentate my videos in a post-production way. I started doing this because when I was a student, my laptop was too shit to record gameplay and my voice. As you can see, I sometimes include live moments from our sessions to help me and the boys seem more relatable and also prove that I'm not entirely dead inside. The first thing on Robbo and my to-do list is heading down to the movie theater because I've never actually done that before. The film showing is some kind of Soviet-inspired story. Sure, the Russians are a bunch of cold, miserable motherfuckers with no ethics, I have no follow-up. I rate the movie experience 1 out of 10, not enough subliminal communist messaging. The second thing on our to-do list is visiting the mine shafts. We drive out there and Robbo elegantly exits the vehicle. I explode the entrance to the mine shaft and we make our way inside. Oh shit. Did I just see your booty, bro? Hey, it's a bit a great place to murder you and have no evidence. Did you look like the monster? <laughs> like, oh, <yeah. laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Pretty cool as I'd never seen it before, but they were emptier than my balls after I take a sick day from work. Get it? Because I fapped like seven times. Sophisticated peeny jokes. I feel like I'm 2018 Pelican. Next up is something far cooler. An item that is absolutely useless. The anti-aircraft trailer that is frankly pretty bad at shooting down aircraft. It comes with this truck, but you don't actually have to use it. We head down to Los Santos Customs and Robbo does up a much more suitable ute. I think it says a lot about society that literally any woman would sleep with a guy who drives this. Robbo proceeds to reverse and completely miss the trailer, but eventually he gets it, proving he's more than just a dump truck. We then roll out, ready to hunt some dodgy malakas. People might say this is toxic, but when compared to flying around on an oppressor or jet destroying everyone with heat-seeking missiles, it's relatively serene. The trick to justifying your actions is just to compare them to something far harsher. When I go grocery shopping, I usually eat a small bunch of grapes, which is objectively shoplifting. Hiroshima. 
Suddenly a few grapes isn't so bad. We also clear out Grove Street with one of the most refined drive-bys of 2021. Imagine you're a gangster pushing dope and respecting women and your rivals rock up with an anti-aircraft cannon. Anyway, this isn't actually our plan. This was just a bit of fun before we enter stage two. The stage two is picking the anti-aircraft cannon up with a cargo bob so that Robbo will hang below, madly spinning around in circles, shooting on sight. This is overly elaborate, but we're all about dreaming big. We flew around for quite some time before finding a suitable target. You've done so much damage to the chopper. Yeah, I know. He keeps spinning me into the chopper. Is this a good angle? Yeah. Oh, you got him! <laughs> <laughs> Robbo and I mess around with a few other concepts. Like, for example, this one, where we try and land titans on top of buildings, but we had to pull the pin for obvious reasons. As we were coming up with another plane-related idea that wouldn't get us cancelled, some guy called HXRRXRA shot us down with an oppressor. You know he gets a lot of ass because he uses X's in his name instead of vowels, making it impossible to pronounce. I always take the high road when incidents such as this happen. I get my deluxo and kill them until one of us gives up. While waiting for my other mate Jezzo to get online, I execute another classic GTA Online Christian prank. I pick up one of my nicer cars and then drop it off to players who look like they need a ride. This teaches newer players that not everyone is toxic. I then proceed to explode the vehicle with a remote bomb. This teaches new players not to trust a dodgy Australian bird who's thirsty for content. The legend Jezzo arrives and now it's time to execute perhaps our greatest plan of all time. We take our cargo bobs down to Fort Zancudo which translates in English to Fort Mosquito which is pretty weird. When a mosquito sees a lady, he tips his fedora and says, hello malaria. Wow, what a questionable joke. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We then pick up some of the NPC tanks which surprisingly doesn't get you in any trouble. Our plan is to fly them over the city and drop these tanks on players who have a wanted level. It won't matter if they even have just a one star level because hypothetically the tanks will shoot them anyway as the law enforcement here is excessively violent. Immersive. We find a mad lad causing a fuss on the highway and drop my stunning and brave NPC tank down into the mix. In one of GTA's most gripping and even more immersive moments, the tank abandons me almost immediately. Insert dad abandonment joke that I've used like six times before but is still kind of funny because he actually left me. We try again, but this time with a new strategy. Why drop off the tanks? Why not just let them shoot enemy players as they magnificently hang below our choppers? We locate a man called Jay Suez who is in an active police chase. Oh my god, light him up, tank boy. No, I'm, about to, I'm about to crash. Oh, Jez, no! <laughs> Are you just shot me? Light him up, tank. Light him up, tank. Dude, my tank just shot something. My shot's shooting the wrong shit. Damn, I'm good. My tank got him! <laughs> I'm still incredibly surprised that that actually worked. Artificial intelligence and man combined for brilliance. Also, G Suez sent Jez a message apologizing for shooting us down when he realized what we were doing. What a wholesome king. Our next plan involves the anti-aircraft gun, which despite being one of the worst ways to spend $1.8 million, has been good for this video. We figure if we can get the trailer onto the train, we'd have an impressive war train more powerful than Dom Toretto with his entire family by his side. I'm talking extended family. Cousins, aunts, that big hearted uncle that always helps you get changed. I try and jump the trailer multiple times because I figure it'll look cooler than using the cargo bob, but eventually we conform, which I feel says a lot about the current societal landscape. What happened to Fred? freedom and choice. Why do our adult videos get put into categories? What if I want to watch MILFs play Scrabble so I can fap while simultaneously growing my vocabulary and learn my way? Where's the category for that? That's right, there isn't one because humanity is trying to put us all in boxes. At least running down the train looks kind of badass. It kind of reminds me of the time me and the Stealtho boys ran a train on your mum. This is my most immature video in years. And despite sustaining multiple horrific injuries, we eventually get the gun in place. We then put $9,000 bounties on each other to attract players over and prepare for war. The problem is, no one comes to kill us. I don't think these people realize the Geneva Convention doesn't apply to video games. And time ticks on and I resort to doing something I'm not proud of. I begin messaging every player in the city, calling them unhydrated malakas. I'm well aware that this is one of the nastiest things you can say to someone, but we're running out of options. After 10 minutes, not one response or attempt to kill us. I implement stage two. I begin sending messages taunting the other players using cringe tactics such as the capitalization of the term lol and an excessive amount of emojis. Still nothing. 
We're basically just taking an extremely inefficient tour of the city right now. I proceed to enter baiting tactics stage three, which is a stage I'm definitely not proud of, but I'm getting desperate. Please try to get us. It's for a video. I have a million subscribers. I'm officially a cringe YouTuber as I attempt to use any clout I have to lure an opponent to the train. Then in a shocking turn of events, Lucid Raven 725 sends me a text message saying, you're not real. This guy really hitting me with the philosophical statements, Jesus. We do multiple laps of the entire map as we're too stubborn to give up. Then like a stealth angel descending from the heavens, a player rapidly approaches our position in a chopper. Oh, it's a different guy, it's a Drago guy. Oh shit! <laughs> we spent almost two hours doing that to die instantly by a heat seeking missile. Worth it. Maud the Saucy Minx flicks me a message saying that I've got another bounty target. I actually do want to complete her bounty missions as the reward is pretty cool. Out of nowhere, Stealth Carbo arrives for a late but truly welcomed cameo. He's got himself a stylish new outfit featuring a fedora. Sure, fedoras are good for attracting women, but not nearly as good as finding a girl who's into astrology and then texting her at exactly 2.22pm so she thinks it's a sign. This legend called Yeet Boy 4009 rocks up to say hi and then Carbo brutally murders him for no reason. Yeet boy will be missed dearly. The first target I need to assassinate is way up north, so we fly up there and I spot a crack den that I simply must purchase. $165,000 well spent, I'm sure that I'll make a lot of fantastic memories here with the boys. Such as this truly inspiring conversation we had regarding interior design. It's actually coming back in, Anna and her sister are trying to tell me. I don't know about it though. What? You reckon? Green. Apparently. I know. Actually, I did hear about someone having a green splashback. Yeah, I was like, the fuck? Because they, I thought they were joking when they were showing me these. What's a splashback? See so the white tiles the there? Bench. Like oh, the white the tiles up below the cupboard? That's like splashback. All right. What a strange conversation to be having in GTA. <laughs> <laughs> and Carbo goes AFK, so he sees the opportunity. I call Lamar and order a mugger to come and take his cash. You can actually watch the results unfold from the comfort of your crack den's television. We load into Jezo's stretch hummer and begin searching for the target. I then look up and notice Yeet Boy has followed us all the way up here, probably to get revenge. The lads and I have never been so scared of a weaponless seaplane. Yeet Boy then crashes his aircraft and dies in what I can only assume is a show of dominance. We find the target and I chase him down to the street, but then Jezo cleans him up in his Hummer. One down, two to go. Yeet Boy pops up again with a mullet thicker than the extended version of the Bible. Yeet Boy proceeds to shank Stealth Carbo. The lads log off out of respect to Yeet Boy, but I'm committed to completing these bounty missions. My next target is doing a little banking, so I give her a Yeet Boy worthy shanking via a moped. Apparently you get more money if you deliver the bounty alive, but the drop off point is really far away and Thick Man is a busy boy. I make my way to the last target. He too surrenders after being violently beaten. He then hops on the back of my moped and tries to act like we're bros. Maybe he's heard about how I collaborated with the artificial intelligence earlier when we cargo bobbed those tanks and believes man and machine could be friends again. Maud lives really far away though, so my hands are tied. I head out to this island to find a chest and collect my reward. A stone hatchet that Rockstar put in GTA Online so they could promote Red Dead Redemption 2. I get a notification saying if I get 25 kills with it I'll get the money, so I begin slaughtering NPCs. If you string kills together you go into rampage mode and you go near Immortal for a while. I kill about 50 NPCs but get no money, so I move on to killing real players. I instigate some sort of free for all axe fight but never get any cash. I believe this is a metaphor for life, where Rockstar included an impossible challenge challenge to help teach kids that they will always fail. Good parenting. Thanks for watching you absolute legends, until next time and as always, stay classy.